very often when people have a conversion experience and start walking with the Lord, uh, the Lord allows a kind of a honeymoon period, which is great. Uh, so we convert or we start praying or we come back from a pilgrimage and we're all enthusiastic and prayer can be very easy and there can be uh, immediate kind of uh, satisfaction or immediate uh, a, a, a feeling if you will like a good feeling when we pray or a good feeling when we go to retreats and do these things so the Lord can allow these these experiences to get us started you know to give us a bit of it's like that romantic stage of a relationship with um, you know all the all of the, you know, roses and meals and oh, hand-holding and uh, all that kind of stuff at the beginning of a relationship. It's, it's, actually, it's actually necessary, you know, because you need, you, need, <laughs> you need to actually like the person, you know, you need to actually kind of spend time with the person and, and, and show that you care, they need to show they care, and it's all good. Okay, so it's a necessary, it's a necessary time in a relationship. Okay. Uh, but the reason those kind of moments are necessary is because they won't always last. That's not the way the whole relationship is going to go. So when times get difficult, then you need to recall, remember, I used to like that person. <laughs> or, do you remember the good days? Do you remember the good experiences? All the good things that happened, all, the, all the, 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 the good times together. And similarly with the Lord, when, when days get difficult, uh, when there may not be an immediate emotive gratification, so an, an emotive satisfaction in our prayer, we need to recall the days when, when prayer was easy, when prayer was good. Because it's not always like, it's, just, it's like any relationship. It's, it's not a constant... Uh, there, there is a logic to what Jesus is doing. So it, it should be a, a, a constant growth in, in our love for the Lord. But it's not... How should I say? It, 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 sometimes the growth comes from like a, a good experience of prayer, and sometimes the next period of growth is actually a period of difficulty, a period of when we're kind of carrying a cross, and that can actually cause growth. But it doesn't feel like growth in the same way as going to Medjugorje for a week does. That's easy. Uh, so, so there should be kind of yes, constant growth, but it's not through the same kinds of experiences. Sometimes there are good experiences, sometimes there are difficult experiences. So. Yeah, so then in those, in those difficult moments, we need to, 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 to remember what it was like to feel carried by the Lord, or what it was like when, when prayer was easy, and say, Lord, you are still the same God, you are still there, and if you were carrying me then, you're carrying me now. And if, if, if prayer satisfied my heart then, then prayer can satisfy my heart now, just in a different way. And I'll say these, these kind of more difficult moments will, will pass too. You know, the, 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 the joy or the, 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 the facility, the, the easiness of prayer will, will return. But just, there are ebbs and flows. You know, it's not, it's, not, it's not always the same. So why do I say this? Today is the Feast of St. Vincent de Paul. So he was born... Um, we have a French person in community now, which is very intimidating when I have to say French place names, because I will pronounce them, I will butcher them, so I'm very, very sorry. So, uh, I, can't, I won't even pronounce where the village he's from, it's P-O-U-Y, I, Puy, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, it's, it's west, west of Toulouse anyway, in between Toulouse and Lourdes actually. Uh, so, that's where he was born in 1581. Uh, born into a relatively poor family, um, entered seminary. Well, in, uh, seminary system didn't exist as it does now, but uh, he became a priest anyway. So he entered into priestly formation, was ordained in uh, the year 1600. Okay, so he served for about five years uh, as a priest, and then going from Marseille to Nabon, uh, he was sailing across. There's a the, the, this is in the south of France. Rather than driving around, you can sail from Marseille to Narbonne, which he did, and his ship was attacked by pirates from Tunisia. So he was brought as a slave, ordained five years, and then taken as a slave to Tunisia. Now, again, like, we've been reflecting a little on this as well with, with uh, Father Emil Capon yesterday, you know. Uh, why would God allow something like this? You've just been ordained. France needed priests. France actually had very few priests, and the few that it had were badly formed. There wasn't a seminary system, so the way you became a priest was you studied under your, your local parish priest, more or less, or maybe a, if he was, wasn't capable, you'd go to a local priest or a local enough priest and study under them. You'd kind of be tutored by them. 
So it was a very haphazard kind of system. Maybe he was good, maybe he wasn't, maybe he knew his stuff, maybe he didn't. So th there, there wasn't a, a good standard of priesthood overall. It was, it was a bit, it was a mess. It was an absolute mess. So France needed priests. It needed good priests and it needed a lot of them. And now here the Lord allows this good priest to be taken into slavery in Tunisia where rather than performing any priestly ministry or at least not, not in the same way, he's working as a slave. Why would the Lord allow this? Surely if, 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 if he's a man of prayer and if he has you know, prayed to do God's will, surely things should just get better and better and better and better, right? No. No, sometimes the Lord allows these things, these periods that are, that are not easy and that might even seem completely contradictory to what would be required from a human perspective. So he allows these things because in God's mind, he knows what the bigger picture is. And he knows how even this sacrifice and these two years of, of, of slavery, how they will ultimately serve God's greater plan. That, my goodness, does that require faith from our side. So he's there for, as a slave for about two years. And then he and uh, his master actually are able to escape back to France uh, where he continues to serve as a priest in Avignon, I believe. And then, as I said earlier, th there weren't a lot of priests and the priestly formation was very weak. So there was also a lot of poverty in France at the time. So, so like St. Vincent sees these various needs very, uh, and, and very different needs, right? So there's the poor. So he sets up charitable organizations to feed the poor, clothe the naked and so on. I mean, he, he really was, was driven to help the poor. Having come from a poor family himself, he knew what it was like to wake up wondering, will you eat today? So he couldn't do the work himself. Or he couldn't do all the work himself. So he founded a religious uh, institution for women as well to, to serve the poor there. Uh, he also saw a great need in amongst prisoners to serve them. So people who have just been locked away, forgotten by society, and kind of left there to rot until they died. You know? So he saw the need to minister to them as well. So he starts a, a prison ministry. And he sees priests, or at least young men, uh, who desire to be priests, who aren't getting good formation, who don't know the faith well, or don't live the faith themselves. So he starts a religious institution for priests called the Vincentians, and they at one point uh, ran 53 seminaries, not seminarians, seminaries uh, in France. So for the, for the formation of, of, of young men of faith to become priests. So we see that from this like, apparent contradiction, right, this man this priest being taken away into slavery for two years, the fruit of his ministry, not only was it fruitful in his life, the fruit of his ministry is still being born today. You know, like what he started today is still working. So you might think, well, why, 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 why waste those two years as a slave? But like, he died in 1660. This is a lot of years later. And, and his ministry is still going on. You know, he's still serving, even though he's, He's not even here. The Lord blessed those two years with a fruitful... It's like this, this, the, 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 the grain of wheat falling into the ground and dying. It looks like everything is lost. But that grain of wheat dying brings up a whole plant and bears fruit 30 or 100 fold. So in our lives, in our experience, uh, things would be similar. Not as dramatic as being taken into slavery, I imagine. Uh, but... But there will be experiences of, uh, of loss, there will be experiences of failure, there will be experiences of our own inability. And so we ask the good Lord today to help us to always see these things through eyes of faith, that in the Lord's plan, that he knows what he's doing, and that every apparent loss, every like a little maybe apparent death uh, inside us, that it bears fruit in us, possibly, probably now, but most definitely in, in, in the Lord's plan and in the Lord's time. So may we wait patiently and may we trust him in all things. Amen.